Today we're here to talk about the recently released single step EPDs powered by Bolt technology. So I would like to give you a little bit of warning that as you take your first glance at the new, the new EPDs, you may notice that accuracy values tend to be lower, especially for the calving ease and growth traits. And this is for a very good reason. Historically, accuracy has been approximated and not calculated directly. And this is for a very good reason. It's actually because accuracy is much harder to calculate than the EPDs themselves, and computing power just couldn't keep up with the ability to uh, calculate the, the accuracy directly. Moving to the Bolt system will allow us now to have real, true, uh, calculated accuracy instead of an approximation. So why does this matter to you? Well, it's a good thing because it, it removes a, what we call approximation bias. In the past, some of the older sires and dams, especially those who achieved their accuracy primarily through grand progeny, actually had accuracies that were reported higher than they probably should have been. Um, so going forward, those accuracies will be a bit lower, but they're a true reflection of that animal's actual accuracy for that trait. This also, you'll notice, um, sometimes in the past you may have had a surprise when an animal's EPD moved a lot more than you expected it to, outside of what we call the possible change or the expected possible change, and now computing accuracy directly should remove that phenomenon as well. The Bolt technology and the release of the single step method has sort of been the star in all the discussion um, surrounding the new release. But as a matter of fact, there are some other fairly substantial upgrades to the EPDs and to the models used to compute those EPDs that also contribute to some of the changes that you're seeing. And so a key piece of that uh, is uh, a change and an upgrade to the carcass model. Uh, in the past, the carcass traits were simply indexes of the carcass trait itself and its underlying ultrasound trait. Uh, we have now upgraded that to a true multi-trait model. Uh, so the trait itself and all of its correlated traits and the proper correlations. And in addition, we went through and updated the correlation between carcass traits and the underlying ultrasound trait, which hadn't been done for a couple of decades and was definitely in, in need of an update. The second update that was made was to the calving ease and birth weight model. In the past, if you submitted a contemporary group of calving ease scores and there was no variation, in other words, if you submitted all ones for the entire contemporary group, that information was not useful uh, to the calving ease and birth weight uh, computation for those EPDs. Now, even if there is no variation in, submitted in the calving ease scores, we can still use both the calving ease scores and the birth weights. So you'll see a bit of a change in the calving ease and birth weight EPDs and improved accuracies due to that as well. In the past, we used the Meat Animal Research Center uh, breed differences in, uh, in this evaluation. Uh, when we got ready to release the single step or bolt EPDs, we realized that thanks to the contribution of all the performance data from all of the partner breeds, we actually can do a much better job on the calving ease and growth traits by using our own data, our own partner data, uh, for the breed contrast for calving ease and growth traits. Unfortunately, that is not the case for the carcass traits. We do not have enough carcass data from across uh, the breadth of the IGS partner breeds to be able to use our own data for the breed contrast for carcass. So we will continue to use mark data and mark breed, breed contrast for the carcass evaluation. So I'd like to talk through a series of examples now that illustrate why moving to single step was important and even better uh, for the Gelby breed. Uh, as you can see by this uh, visual, uh, I have the current progeny equivalents. And so just to explain a little bit about what progeny equivalents are, uh, if you do a genomic test on an animal, the progeny equivalents tell you how many progeny with reported data for that trait you would have to have in order to get the same level of accuracy as the genomic test. And so you can see using the current blending method and our current training population for genomics, for calving ease, that's calving ease direct on a young bull, you would have to have uh, five heifers uh, that have calved and have those calving scores submitted to the association. As we transition to single step, you'll notice that goes up to 15. So that's illustrating that more bang for your genomic buck. Now that genomic test gives you 15 progeny uh, worth of information or worth of, worth of added accuracy uh, to the evaluation. 
So as you look down through the list on the right hand side of the screen, you'll notice um, that those are some really large and impressive numbers, perhaps with the exception of Cavigny's maternal. And there's a very good reason for this, and this is my plug to ask you to be sure to genotype your females as well. There simply are not enough genotyped females in order to um, do a good job uh, with the genomics for Cavigny's maternal. Uh, as you guys accumulate genotypes on your females, expect to see that number go up in the future. So clearly we would like to have genotyped females to do a better job on the Cavigny's maternal trait, but also from, for your own personal use. If you look down through the progeny equivalent list and how many calves you would have to submit data on to get the level of accuracy you can achieve from a genomic test, and you look down through there and think, how many calves can a female have in her life? With a genomic test, you can get more accuracy than a lifetime's worth of natural calves from a female. So I think uh, that allows you to make better decisions in the females you keep. It allows you to make better mating decisions moving forward. And so not only is it good for the advancement of the breed, it's good for the advancement of you as a breeder to make better and more accurate uh, selection and mating decisions as you go forward. Now, looking at this table, you might be persuaded to say, well, why am I collecting performance data at all? Why don't I just do a genomic test and my job is done? Uh, not so fast, my friend. We still do need you to collect all of the performance data that you've been collecting in the past. Um, actually, performance data may be more important now than ever because it's that performance data that drives the accuracy and the efficacy of the genomic test. So without performance data, all we have is a list of A's, T's, G's, and C's that don't really mean anything. Uh, we have to have actual performance data and be able to say, why does this animal that has 15 extra pounds of weaning weight, what is it in its DNA that makes it better than this animal that has uh, 15 less pounds? And so performance data is as important as ever and perhaps more important as ev than ever as we move forward in the genomic era. So as Gelby breeders, you're currently used to getting new EPDs twice a year and you're well acquainted with the data cutoff uh, to have your data used in the evaluation biannually. Uh, moving forward, the evaluation will happen once a week. Uh, there still is a data cutoff. Uh, the evaluation begins late Tuesday evening. That means that information received by close of business Monday, uh, that's genomic test results, that's performance data that you may have submitted, will be included in that week's evaluation. If you miss that cutoff, don't expect to see your EPDs move or genomic information be included until the next week. So the good news is uh, this all happens on a week to week to week basis. Uh, so you don't have to wait six months uh, if you miss the data cutoff. However, there still is a data cutoff and it happens uh, close of business Monday. Uh, the second thing to keep in mind is biannually, with the accumulation of data that can happen in six months, we see some pretty wild changes sometime each time the new EPDs are rele released. One of the good benefits of moving to a weekly evaluation is you'll see more stability. There won't be those big changes from week to week um, unless you submit a genomic test or unless there's a large contemporary group of, of progeny data that comes in on a young bull. Otherwise, you should see very small and very incremental changes from week to week. So if you have questions uh, going forward or any time, you are welcome to give, uh, send me an email at any point. Uh, my email address is tanya at gelby.org. When you send those messages, please include the registration number for your animal and also the specific EPD that you have a question about. Uh, researching changes in EPDs does require me sometimes to dig into progeny and performance information, uh, which isn't necessarily quick to do over the phone. So the easiest way to get your questions answered is to send me an email uh, with your registration number and the EPD you have a question about.